All right, guys, what's going on? This is Logan with West Desert Shooter, and I'm going to run you through my custom Tika T3X. That's uh, seen a few revisions. This is the 3.0 version. So let's just get right down to it. At the heart of the rifle, it is a Tika T3X action. It started life as a short action 243 and is currently a seven millimeter short action ultra mag, which means I had to take the bolt face onto a lathe and actually cut and open it to a magnum size caliber. Also, this is sitting in a long action chassis here. Um, this magazine is for 300 wind mag. So I adjusted and grinded away the bolt stop to make it stop the bolt further back which makes it a long action. The Tikas are cool because you could actually convert them like that. So I took a short action, I modified the bolt stop, and now it's a long action. Looking at the bolt itself, we've got some Anarchy Outdoors bolt accessories. I've got an aluminum bolt shroud and the awesome anodized red finish right here. And then I've got the different swept back bolt knob or bolt handle. And then it's threaded and you can choose from a couple different uh, bolt knob variations from Anarchy Outdoors. And uh, I went with the round ball, just a little bit different. Kind of like it. It's comfortable, it's fast, it's easy to grab a hold of in your hand. It's really hard for it to slip off of that thing. And uh, I like the red just kind of to make it stand out. I almost didn't do red, but I decided to try it out anyway. Now, the barrel work. Barrel is a match grade machine preferred barrel blanks barrel. It's the same company, they're cutting the barrels in the same place. Match grade machine started as a Thompson Center contender uh, barrel manufacturer, and now they've gotten into uh, barrel blanks through their company preferred barrel blanks. This muzzle brake on the end, they actually cut for me custom in their shop, and they put a recessed crown on the brake itself, which I think is really awesome looking. I did request a three port break and they went ahead and helped me out with that. The overall length of this barrel is 26 inches plus the muzzle brake. So there's actually a seam right at the tip of my thumbnail there. It's kind of hard to see on a camera, but that will thread off. It's 5 8 by 24. I will hopefully have a can on the end of this soon, which is a nine inch long all titanium can. So it's gonna be a really long overall length. Okay. Moving further back, I got this bipod from a local FTR shooter, so it's like an F-Class style bipod. There's no branding on this, I don't know what brand it is, and he didn't remember what brand it was either. But uh, it's really wide, it's got these uh, like little ski feet, so under recoil it just scoots straight back. Um, it's harder to preload like this, but I wanted to try it out. Um, I can lock it left and right and completely level the rifle and lock it in place as well as it's adjustable up and down, but unfortunately I don't have a name brand for you guys. The excellent chassis that this thing is sitting in is a Modular Driven Technologies ESS, which stands for Elite Sniper System. I went with the 18 inch fore end with no rail. I don't really have a reason to have a rail up here, but if I did, at a later point, it's all M lock, so all I gotta do is take a PIX rail section, mount it on top, and it's good to go. You can get these in a carbon fiber fore end, which are really sweet looking, but I have a big bull barrel on this thing. This thing is heavy. It weighs 19 pounds. So I didn't see a reason to go for the carbon fiber when actually I want weight in this rifle anyway. So no reason to go with carbon fiber there. Now these chassis are really cool because you customize them when you order them. This is the main chassis. You got your little hand guard section here. Got your little barricade stop magazine well, and then it cuts off at the tail right here. So that's the heart of it. You choose if you want long or short action, and whatever inlet for whatever different uh, action you have, and they have a lot of options. You choose the rail that you want in whatever color you want. You choose the chassis you want, whatever color you want. Um, you choose the grip that you want. They have multiple available, and then you get to choose your stock. This is the skeleton stock, and I have a few of their accessories on here as well. Um, this is the non-folding version, although you can get them. Uh, I just wanted as solid of a lockup as possible. And it's got like a great big eight millimeter Allen head in here. So it's pretty dang solid in there. I did have the rear weight added in here. 
Um, you can see this big black section. Without it, it just is a cut open area like this. It's really cool looking. It attaches by three Allen heads through the back of the stock. And then I also had the bag rider accessory thrown in there because what I'm doing, I run a rear rest and I'm trying to get as solid and as repeatable of shots as possible. That's why I went with like the ski feet and then this bag rider. So the whole thing should just recoil straight back and slide into my shoulder. The stock is by far and away the best stock I've ever run. It is the most adjustable system that is probably out there. The cheek piece goes up and down, moves left and right, and then you can even like cant it to where like the front edge is further right and then the back edge is further left. So you can like scoot it out or you can scoot it this way. Um, really awesome. I wouldn't mind like trying to get some type of cover for this. It is a hard plastic um, under recoil. I wouldn't mind having like some type of fabric on there. That'd be pretty sweet. Maybe I'll come up with something in the future. The recoil pad is is like the perfect mix between hard recoil pad, but still forgiving. Um, under heavy recoil, this is nice and soft, but like on a 223, this isn't gonna do anything for you. Um, it is squishy, it's rubber, it'll stick to your shoulder, whatever you're trying to do. And this is one of the key features that I really wanted in a stock. I wanted the recoil pad to be able to come up in line with the bore. So when I lay down prone and shoot, which is like 99% of the time what I'm gonna be doing with this rifle, because it's so heavy, I really want this recoil pad coming straight into my shoulder. And when it sits down low, like most uh, stocks and chassis do, it just, it rides too low in my shoulder pocket. It's uncomfortable to shoot for a long time. I can lay behind this thing all day long. And again, with the adjustability, it's really awesome. It goes up and down. And this one, you can even can't left and right. You can scoot the whole thing left or right. So whatever kind of weird shoulder pocket you got going on, this thing will fit you. So the scope base that I'm running on here is actually a 30 MOA scope base from Anarchy Outdoors. The Tika Actions also have an inlet up front here uh, that allows for scope bases to have recoil lugs. And this scope base has one, so. Under heavy recoil with the seven millimeter, um, I don't have to worry about my scope like the hardware trying to shear off under recoil, nothing like that. Uh, this is an Anarchy Outdoors base, same place that you get the bolt the shroud and bolt mod. Um, I have links for all of these companies in the description so you guys can go check all these out. Uh, and then finally, the optic that I went with is a Tracked Toric Ultra HD. So there you go, Tracked Toric Ultra HD. This one is a four to 20 power. It's first focal plane, 30 millimeter tube, shot HD glass. I have a tracked bubble level and I have IOTA rings. Um, if you guys watch my how to mount a precision rifle scope video, um, I go into really fine detail about how I set this whole thing up and I'm mounting it on this Tika. So it's specific to this. These rings are really cool. Um, I like where the hardware goes, how it goes up into the from the bottom to the top so it creates more of a clean flush look as well as like if it rains it's not going to fill up with water on my first shooting trip with this gun it rained on it so that was awesome but i didn't have to worry about the scope hardware the turrets lift rotate lock back down and it's got a zero stop super solid i really like that zero stop these things are awesome it's illuminated as well it parallaxes down to 25 yards so you could run this on a rimfire if you had the budget for it. Um, it parallaxes, let's see, 100, 200, 3, 5, 8, infinity. Uh, this is the bubble level that uh, Tract offers on their website. I went with that just because to complete the whole package. These rings match the scope, and then I threw a bubble level in there from Tract as well. Over here, the windage turret locks as well. Pull it out, rotate it, whatever you gotta do. Lock it back in. This is an awesome, awesome scope. I will throw a little clip of a video of the reticle itself. Now Tract does have a uh, PRS style reticle coming out for their MRAD versions. It's got a floating center dot and then the Christmas tree style holdoffs. I looked at it and I like kind of paid attention to what they put into it. And these guys know what they're doing. It's gonna be a really cool reticle for the PRS guys. 
Uh, for this particular setup, I'm going to dial for all my ranges, so I prefer this uh, MOA reticle in this one for this rifle. For my 22, I would definitely get that MRAD uh, PRS style reticle. And finally, the reloading components I'm using in here. I had the chamber cut specifically for the Atlas Development Group brass and a Sierra 183 grain bullet. Um, I put the boat tail to where it starts just at the end of the neck there. So the boat tail hangs about to the bottom of the shoulder of the seven song. If you're looking for seven millimeter song brass or a six five song as well, ADG has you covered. Uh, they do a lot of the Magnum cartridges as well. Just check out their lineup. They offer a lot of really good stuff. The uh, carrier you see here is actually wet because I went shooting in the rain the other day and uh, it's an inflection DE kit. Um, I'll leave a link for these guys as well. Um, pretty small company, really cool product. They have a few different really cool uh, products that those guys shoot long range. They know what's good for long range, so definitely check them out. ADG Brass is made in USA with 100% USA components. Super high quality, like on the level of Lapua. Definitely worth checking out. So that is the Tika 3.0 project. I am planning on taking this thing out to 2,000 yards and beyond as soon as I can hit 2,000 yards. I'll just keep going until I can no longer get consistent results. Uh, these bullets are coming out at, uh, the barrel's speeding up as I'm breaking it in. I'm only on like round 40 as of this video. And uh, they started out at 2,900. I shot that same powder charge again, and they're up to 2,960 with no pressure signs. So this thing may turn out to be a real speed demon, which I'm all about for this ultra long range stuff. Super fun. I appreciate you guys watching. Be sure to check out all the links in the description. I'll have links for everything there. Until next time, guys, we will see you in the next video.